Using a handsaw may seem like a simple task. I mean, how hard could it really be? You just put the saw on the wood and start cutting, right? Well, if you're just bucking firewood, that approach may be just fine. But when it comes to making the precise cuts required for fine woodworking, there's a bit more to it than that. First, the choice of saw is very important. And not just whether it's a rip saw or a crosscut saw. The thickness of the blade, the size of the teeth, and even the rake and fleam angles can make a difference in how the saw cuts. So consider the criticality of the cut when you're choosing a saw. Use longer saws with larger teeth for fast, non-critical cuts, such as breaking down rough lumber. You're not making finished surfaces here, rather you're just taking large boards and cutting them down into smaller, more manageable, but still oversized pieces that will be further processed with other tools. The primary goal here is to get the job done efficiently. These are not precise cuts. When you're making slightly more critical cuts, choose a handsaw with smaller, finer teeth. Now, many folks will choose a shorter handsaw, also known as a panel saw for these kind of cuts, but longer saws with finer teeth are also available, and those are my personal preference. An example of this kind of cut would be sawing a tabletop to find the length. Here, you want the cut to follow a line precisely, and you only want to have to clean up the cut edge with a few swipes from a hand plane or a little bit of sanding. Now speed isn't quite as important as precision here, but since we'll still be cleaning this edge up after we make the cut, we still want to make the cut efficiently. For extreme precision cuts, choose a saw with a thin blade, very fine teeth, and a stiffening back. Now these saws go by many names like tenon saw, sash saw, carcass saw, and dovetail saw but the name of the saw really isn't as important as how the saw is set up. Examples of these types of critical cuts can be seen here on the bench. They're joinery cuts, like mortise and tenon, dovetails, and miters. With these cuts, ultra precision is the name of the game. They're generally not very long, so we don't need a very long saw, and the cuts also generally aren't very deep, so we don't need a saw with a lot of depth of cut or one that cuts very quickly. However, what we do want is for these cuts to be as clean as possible because we don't want to have to do any cleanup after we make the saw cut or we risk ruining the joint. And it almost goes without saying that the saw should also be sharp. Using a saw that is not sharp is not only inefficient, it's also an exercise in extreme frustration but just as important as choosing the correct, well-sharpened saw for the job is using proper technique with that saw. As I mentioned earlier, unless you're just bucking firewood, it's not as simple as just putting the blade on the wood and moving it back and forth. Practicing inefficient technique only serves to solidify bad habits. Instead, you wanna to learn to work with your body, not against it. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look at the series of lines drawn across this board. Which one do you think is square? I'll give you a second to look at them. Did you guess the middle one? The human eye and brain are actually very good at judging plum and square. And as you do more and more woodworking, your eye will become more and more sensitive to something that is out of square. So when I'm using a handsaw, I try to use my body position and my brain's built-in square to my advantage. You see, your body and your brain naturally want to follow a straight line when you're sawing. And a well-tuned and well-set-up saw will follow a straight line without any help from you. So if you position your body correctly and you start your cut accurately and squarely, you actually should be able to close your eyes and continue sawing and that saw will continue to follow that square line straight across the board. However, in order for this to work, you need to learn to position yourself properly. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Now first, before you position yourself and get set up to make the cut, make sure you're gripping the saw properly. The proper grip on a handsaw is similar to the proper grip on a pistol. Three fingers, and a thumb around the handle with your index finger pointing down the barrel. 
Now most older style handsaws, such as the one that I base this saw on, don't have enough room in the handle for the average adult to get more than three fingers anyway. I would really have to cram my hand into this grip. So it's really meant for a three finger grip with one finger pointed down the saw. Most joinery saws are similar and are only going to allow the average adult to fit three fingers in the grip. However, many later model saws, such as this Distin D8, have much more room in the handle. And in fact, not only can I fit four fingers in here, I could probably get a fifth if I had six fingers on my hand. Um, even if you can fit a full four fingers in the grip like this, resist the urge to do so. You're going to get the most control out of your saw with a relaxed three finger grip with your index finger pointing down the blade. And speaking of a relaxed grip, that brings me to my next point. Don't death grip the saw. If your knuckles are turning white, you're really going to start to pull the saw off course. One of the keys to accurate, precise sawing is to saw with a very relaxed grip and a relaxed stroke. If you start to tense up, you tend to pull things out of alignment. So three finger grip, nice and relaxed, one finger down the barrel to point at your target. This should be your nice, relaxed saw grip. So a big part of being able to saw accurately really comes down to how well you position yourself and how well you can see what you're doing. Now, I've got a line on this board here. And if I wanna saw this line, several things have to happen. First, my saw has to be lined up with that cut line. If my saw isn't lined up with the cut line, obviously it's not going to cut on that line. But there's a little bit more to it than that. You see, as, your move, as you saw, your arm needs to move in a straight line. So that means that your arm, this, your wrist, the saw, your elbow, your shoulder, all of these things need to line up in a plane, one straight flat plane. If you get the saw lined up, but your elbow is out here or way in here, it's going to pull the saw offline. Similarly, if you get the saw lined up and your arm is in line, but your shoulder's over here, your body's going to want to pull this way. Or if you get too over the saw, your body's going to want to pull this way. So all of these things need to be lined up. So you want to take a nice relaxed stance, remember nice relaxed grip, Open yourself up to the board. Don't try to saw a board straight on like this. You're really going to uh, cause problems for yourself in terms of the ergonomics, and you're going to force your arm to go in weird contortionist directions that are gonna pull your cut off line. So open your stance up. If you're right-handed Sawyer, drop your, your right foot back so that your body opens up and your arm and your shoulder and your elbow have room to move past your torso. If you're closed this way, you have to be way out here in order for your arm and your elbow and your shoulder to move past your torso. But the cut line's over here. So you need to open your body up to the board, give your arm and your elbow and your shoulder, your wrist and the saw, room to move past your torso. The next thing, once you get your saw lined up, is going to be your head position. Now, I've said myself that this has to do with your dominant eye many, many years ago. Other people have said similar things. Um, and eye dominance does not really play a role in this. However, you do want to keep the eye that's on the same side as your sawing hand over top of the saw. It doesn't have to be your dominant eye. But the purpose of this is for helping you to see plumb. Now remember, you have two eyes. You're going to saw with your eyes open. But if you close your left eye, if you're a right-handed sawyer, your right eye should see nothing but the back of this saw. I can't see the blade. 
all I can see is the back of this, uh, the back here. What that means, if I've got everything lined up, my shoulder, my elbow, my wrist, and the saw, and I get my eye directly over all these things, and all I see is the back of the saw, that means my saw is plumb. If I can see any little bit of saw plate like I can now, this saw blade is not being held vertical. Or if I can see any of this side of the saw blade, again, the saw blade is not being held vertical. If this saw is perfectly plumb, my eye sees nothing but the back of the saw. Now, as I mentioned, I have two eyes. My left eye sees my cut line. My saw gets placed to the waist side, in this case, the right side of the cut line. Close my eye. I see nothing but the back of the saw. Straight line. My left eye can see and follow the cut line to make sure I'm, getting, uh, I'm not getting off course. Okay, so as I line up for this cut, here is what I'm seeing. This is the view out of my right eye. If I close my left eye, we'll call it the Bob's eye view. If I tip the saw blade to the right, you can see the saw blade, but the saw is no longer plumb. If you can see the saw blade on this side, again, the saw is no longer plumb. If all you're seeing is the back of that saw back, then you know that that saw is plumb to the cut. And you can see from this view, my body position, my torso is opened up. The saw is aligned with my wrist, my elbow, my upper arm, my shoulder, and my head is positioned so that my right eye is right over the top of all of this, all in the same plane. And that allows me, when I make this cut, to keep the saw square to the line because my left eye can see the line, and it allows my right eye to keep the saw plumb because if I see, again, the side of the blade in either direction, I know that I'm out of plumb. So as long as I keep my body positioned this way, move my arm in a nice, straight line back and forth. I'm going to follow that saw cut and I'm going to keep that saw plumb because my right eye is going to help me to keep that saw plumb. And working in a saw bench is going to be very similar. I place my right knee on the board and I open my body up and I'm still in the same position. My right eye is over the back of the blade and I really can only see the back of the blade if I close my left eye. Relaxed grip. The saw is in line with my wrist, is in line with my elbow, upper arm, shoulder, and my right eye. So I know with this body position, if I make this cut, okay, I can follow that line nice and straight. I don't have a line on this board, but what I'm trying to get at is that the, the posture and the position is the same, whether you're working at the bench or whether you're working at a saw bench, you're still, you want everything to be lined up in one plane and you're going to move within that plane using your right eye, if you're right-handed, to help you to keep that saw plumb. So one last note on body position, mechanics, and posture. It can be very helpful when you're first learning to use hand saws to take some pictures of yourself or even better, take some video of yourself actually making some saw cuts. Get yourself a cheap tripod, put your phone on a tripod and set it up so that you can record yourself making a few saw cuts both at the workbench and on the saw bench. And then go back and review those videos and, and look at yourself. Nobody else is going, to, is going to look, so don't be embarrassed. Look at yourself and actually critique yourself. Is the saw in line? Is, is everything in one line or do you have your elbow out? Are you too tight to your body? Um, is your head over here or is it too far on this side? So really go back and look and see how you're sawing and then make corrections based on what you're seeing in those videos. And if you do that a few times, once you see a video where, okay, I got it that time, right? My body was opened up. Everything was in line. My head was in a good position. Look at the cut from that video. How did it come out? And then try to replicate that. 
Try to remember that position. Try to remember what that felt like. And the more you do it, the more you're going to train yourself and develop the muscle memory to get right back in that position the next time you go and do your sawing, whether again, it's at the workbench or at the saw bench. But taking some video of yourself can really help you to self-diagnose some problems that you're having with sawing, especially if you know you find that your cuts are a little out of plumb or you're pulling them out of square or maybe the piece is breaking as you're sawing or you're getting a lot of flex in your saw or vibration in your saw take some videos of yourself look at the your body position as you're making those saw cuts and you should be able to then correct your own body position and it will be a big improvement to your sawing. I guarantee you, if you can work on your posture, work on your body position, work on getting that right eye over top of the blade or your left eye, if you're left-handed, over top of the blade and really focus on that, slow down, relax your grip, you're going to see some improvement in your hand sawing.